Yesterday you saw this motherboard in that Thermaltake uh, Tower 200 case that I said that it's really amazing. But today we're going to talk about this motherboard in more details, more benchmarks and uh, more features and specifications. Now, why is this board so appealing? First of all, we have here the ASRock Phantom Gaming A620i Lightning Wi-Fi. And it's an ITX motherboard for your AM5 processors. The cool thing about it is, of course, we have, um, let's say, low range VRMs. So you don't have the amount of VRMs that you're uh, supposed to have in the standard ATX or even ITX motherboards. But we go more deeper in the budget segment. The price for this one should be around 150 to 200 euros, which for AM5 processors is really outstanding. And it gives you guys the ability to use, I don't know, 7600X in a nice, clean, small build. And you shouldn't be spending too much money. But this board really brings down something really cool for you guys that want a cheaper approach to your ITX or basically SFF builds. So let's start with some uh, main uh, features and specs so you get more inside information about this board. It supports AMD socket AM5 with Ryzen 7000 series. This is A620 chipset, mini ITX form factor with eight layer PCB. Since I mentioned VRMs earlier, we have eight plus two plus one power phase with 60 amperes Dr. Moss with enlarged heatsink. They mentioned armor, but let's go with that. Pre-installed and flexible IO shield cover like on 90% of uh, their motherboards. We have uh, two memory slots and supports DDR5 known SEC and buffered memory up to 7200 OC maxed out at 96 gigabytes supports XMP and Expo memory modules. Then we have one PCI 4.0 x 16 slot, which is a shame that it isn't 5.0. But then again, we are talking about a budget motherboard. So that makes kind of sense. We have 256 megabits MUF illegal BIOS uh, with GUI support, 7.1 channel HD audio Realtek ALC, 897 audio codec with a Hemic audio, LAN is Dragon RTL 8125BG and supports Phantom Gaming LAN software. Now, for some connections on the motherboard, we have one Hyper M.2 socket, supports uh, 2280 PCI Gen 4x4 SSDs, then we have uh, one Ultra M.2 socket, it supports 2280 PCI Gen 3x4 and then we have two SATA 3 6 gigabits per second connectors for your 2.5 inch SSDs or hard drives. Uh, supports RAID 0, RAID 1 uh, for SATA storage devices and RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 10 for M.2 NVMe storage devices eh, but it requires additional M.2 NVMe expansion card to support that RAID 10. Now when we go into headers and pins we have two addressable RGB headers Two CPU water pump fan connectors, four pin, which are detected in BIOS as a smart fan speed control, possibility for that. Then we have one uh, chassis water pump fan controller, again, four pin, one 24 pin ATX power connector, one eight pin high density 12 volt power connector, one front panel audio connector, one USB 2.0 header, which supports two USB 2.0 ports, one USB 3.2 gen one header, which supports two USB 3.1 generation ports, and one front panel Type-C USB 3.2 generation 1. Rear I.O. panel. Now, it's uh, quite interesting to check that out as well because it's quite solid. I do have to say two antenna ports, one HDMI port, two USB 3.2 generation 2 Type-A ports, which are 10 gigabits per second, one USB 3.2 generation 1 Type-A port, one USB 3.2 generation 2 Type-C port, 10 gigabits per second, two USB 2.0, one RJ45 LAN port, one BIOS flashback button, and for the HD audio jacks, line in front speaker and microphone. When we take a look uh, at this board, when we're taking uh, a design into perspective, compared to some other budget ASRock motherboards, uh, since we're talking about a smaller board, it doesn't look that naked, as especially when we take into consideration that it has this huge heatsink on the VRMs, which is outstanding because this means that it can cool even better and it's not that shallow, so it kind of has a high density to dissipate the heat even better. But uh, when you take a look at it closer, it even has some uh, openings here, so it kind of helps that heat dissipation quite nicely. 
Now, I'm quite shocked that, uh, positively shocked, of course, that uh, the memories can go up to 7200 MHz, which is outstanding. Visually, it's really nice board. In addition to that, we have a passive heatsink for the front M.2 SSD, which is quite nice. Now, as you already noticed in the past video, I placed it in the ter Thermaltake Tower 200 and paired it up with AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. I placed Thermaltake Stuff RAM D5 RGB at 5600 MHz. And for the SSD, I used Kingston KC3000 Gen 4x4 2TB of SSD storage. They are also connected, I mean, it's relevant, but for the benchmarks, you do need to know uh, Gainward RTX 4070 Phoenix GS. I don't think there's anything left to say except for the cooling. We have Thermaltake's uh, Tough Liquid 240 ARGB Turkeys Edition, and that's basically all. Now, in the video where I covered the Tower 200, I was really satisfied with the thermals. So you don't have to worry about that part. That segment is really nicely covered and that's it. Now let's check the performance. So we start with the uh, RAM modules. So it's 5600 megahertz, right? I'm going to do another review with uh, 2 times 48 gigabytes on Team Group T-Force Delta DDR5 RGB and I'm going to place them on that board just to give you in that video examples. So if you wish to check that video out, which will be out quite soon, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video to get more information about this board as well with a higher uh, clock speed and even maxing out the possibility of RAM. So 96 gigs at the same time. So yeah, so uh, let's continue with uh, the benchmarks. So in AIDA 64 Extreme Edition memory uh, test, Read speeds on these ones went up to 58,893 megabytes, while the write speeds went up to 75,238. Copy 58,718, latency uh, 80.1 nanoseconds, and the CL on these RAMs is 36. Now, AIDA 64 Extreme Edition System Stability Test, CPU went up to 76 degrees, clock speed 5450 megahertz, and GPU went up to 61. Irrelevant for the motherboard, but I wanted to mention that. Cinebench scores. In some boards that are in the budget or mid category tend to have varieties in Cinebench benchmarks. Is it either the cooling, is it either the motherboard or, uh, I don't know, let's put it this way, a broken CPU, which I rarely uh, have, even though I mostly buy my CPUs. So yeah, that's one thing that you have to know. I got quite nice stability in Cinebench R23. So 75 degrees on the CPU through all 10 tests. Uh, the clock speed on the first test was 5325 megahertz. Every other test was 5300. And then we have scores which vary around 14,500. So the maximum is 14,516. And then when we go to the lowest point, 14,442. Now, this processor went up to almost touching 15,000 with the 360 AAO. So this kind of does make sense when we're talking about the benchmarks. Corona 1.3. It took 1 minute and 37 seconds to finish the render with 4.9 million rays, uh, 73 degrees Celsius, and the clock speed was 5,350 megahertz. Uh, Indigo benchmark. Bedroom for the CPU, 1.951 million samples and uh, supercar 4.390 million samples when we're talking about the bedroom uh, for the gpu 18.198 million samples and uh, then we go to the supercar 48.345 and now checking out the speeds on the ssd as ssd kc3000 from kingston read speed 6099.55 megabytes per second write speed 60 162.84 megabytes per second autodisk benchmark read speeds 6.94 gigabytes per second and write speed 6.41 gigabytes per second. I'll stop right here quickly and to mention that Autodisk Benchmark is a great tool in terms of throughout the whole test that it does, you can see the consistency in the speeds and I'm really satisfied with the performance right here. Crystal Disk Mark, read speed 7354.41 megabytes per second, write speed 6764.19 megabytes per second. And uh, I had to do a 3D Mark Time Spy. Time Spy score was 16,094. GPU score was 18,045. And the CPU score was 9,981. So comparing uh, the builds uh, where I usually present the motherboards, 
This one isn't that viewable, seeable in this case because first of all the GPU covers the part, then we have the AIO covering uh, some part and all the other stuff which is kind of understandable since we're talking about the mini ITX motherboard. But for this build it was perfect because uh, pairing up 7600X with it, uh, it kind of does really make uh, sense and I didn't see any problems with the performance on the 7600X just because well we have an AIO that is 240 and it's not 360. 360 would definitely help push the performance a bit higher giving us some 14 thousand I would say even 600 or even maybe touching 700 and uh, that would be quite nice of course especially for the budget you could go with this board specifically and use a CPU that has an integrated graphic card which will definitely help you with uh, lowering the budget for your let's say low tier gaming build without the GPU of course uh, and uh, this could even mean uh, having a much 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 smaller build than this because with this height you'll get you will be getting the uh, same thing as a mid tower chassis but the whole co compactness of this case is a bit different but okay I'm now going more into details with the case the board is definitely satisfactory when we're talking about the price performance visuals and uh, connectivity as well because it has loads of PWM headers with the splitters I managed to connect two fans on the radiator, the pump, two fans here on the top and one fan on the top, one on the bottom and two fans at the back. Okay we have splitters thankfully but they're all connected and it runs quite nicely. BIOS really straightforward it's really actually the same as any other ASRock motherboard when we're talking about that because you have very similar design, very uh, ease of access and user friendly because of the GUI support and uh, you can actually manage literally everything through that. So yeah, I don't know actually what's there left to say. You've, you've seen the benchmarks and uh, compared to some other motherboards that I review 7600X with, uh, you can't expect the same performance, but uh, definitely there for the price. And I'm really, really satisfied. This can be definitely a PC Crazy Best Buy badge when we're taking everything into consideration. A620 chipset, mini ITX form factor, and of course, loads of connections and possibilities with 7200 uh, OC on uh, memory modules, Gen 4 NVMe speeds, whatnot, outstanding, love it. And the visuals, the visuals are also there. So if you think it will be lacking that, it's definitely not. After all, we are having a signature here, Phantom Gaming. So yeah, there's that. Astro Phantom Gaming A620i Lightning Wi-Fi motherboard. You can check it out in the description. If for some reason there still isn't availability on Amazon, since I have an affiliate account over there, uh, I'll try to update it later on uh, if and when I find it, of course, uh, so you could grab it yourself. But there's another ITX motherboard coming from ASRock and I already have it and I will review it the same way as I did the A620. So please do stay tuned. As I mentioned in the middle of the video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell so you don't miss that uh, video for the team group uh, T-Force Delta RGB uh, two times 48 gigabytes on much higher clock speed than these ones to check the speeds and to see everything because this will be additional test for the motherboard as well and so you don't miss that uh, future motherboards from ESRock. That's it. Thanks for sticking by guys. See you very soon.